Hello everyone, my name is Jen. Welcome to my channel. This is a channel about cross stitch and quilting today and just the things that I get up to in my craft room. So today is Saturday, April 13th, 2024. Thank you for coming today. Thank you for watching. Thank you for returning if you're a returning viewer. Um, it's been a while since my last floss tube video. I believe it was at the beginning of February. So I thought it was time for a catch up. Um, I'm probably just gonna get started right away. So today I have cross stitch and quilting to talk about. Um, yes, okay, so February, beginning of February was when I did my last uh, crafty catch up. Since then, I feel like I've been doing stuff, but not a lot of stuff, and everything has been kind of scattered. So I did my video, was home for about a week, then I went away, and then when I came back, um, pretty much any kind of crafting motivation I had just died, uh, which was probably a good thing because we ended up putting our house up for sale, and so we were, I was busy, um, getting the house ready. Um, so put the house up for sale, the house sold. Uh, my husband and I then took a trip to Eastern Ontario where we will be moving to, uh, to look for a house. Um, so we did that. So that's been busy. So basically like with all of this stuff going on, I, um, I've just sort of been wanting to do easy things. Um, I've also been starting a lot of things and I've been failing at a lot of things, but let's talk about the stuff that I worked on. So you already feel like this video is scattered already and I'm two minutes into it. All right, so during the kind of house sale process and I was just tired and I just wanted something easy to work on, I pulled out my Bright Flower Bookmarks kit so I've stitched a number of these and um, so this is a kit that was from Hirschner's. I don't believe it's available anymore. So this has been an ongoing work in progress of mine for a couple of years now, but over uh, like end of February and into March, I completed six um, bookmarks. So I did this one, which I believe are gladiolus, gladioli. And I use all the colors that come in the kit. I just change them around. Like for instance, these roses were supposed to be pink and I wanted them to be peach. And I did the little violets for February. And all I do to finish the back is I just fuse some fabric onto it. And I, I keep meaning to go over just like with white thread, just a running stitch all the way around and I um, haven't done that yet. My machine's been out, but I haven't had white thread in there. Sweet peas. These aren't really monthly bookmarks. I kind of call them monthly bookmarks, but they're really not. Um, this one, this was fun. And I just backed it with that pretty fabric. And then this one, I did not use the called for colors. Uh, these were supposed to be ivory petals and I didn't I didn't really care for that. I didn't think it would show up so well on the white, so I just changed it to yellow. So that was six, and I think I have three more to do, and then I will be finished that kit. And I do plan on completing the other three. I just don't know when that's going to happen. Um, who knows, when we, maybe we move into our new house. I don't know. <laughs> So I also, I worked a little bit on my Mill Hill. Uh, this is called, this is Gold Finch. This is a kit, so uh, really just more fill in. It was mostly this, cause that was just easy to do in one color. And then I did most of the greens. So I'm going to finish the greens and then I can move into the lovely purples of the flower and then that, um, and then the goldfinch and I'll do the beading. So I am doing this kit on the perforated paper that it came with, but this will be the last Mill Hill kit that I do on perforated paper. I really don't enjoy it. 
um, I stitch in hand and I use the sewing method and I can't do that on perforated paper and also I would rather probably turn these into small pillows or I would stitch them on a 14 count Ada um, the other thing that worries me is just that if the perforated paper gets bent or wrinkled you really can't do very much especially if it's bent to take a crease out so after all the work that you put into these and for this size there's typically quite a bit of work because they're almost full coverage and some of them are full coverage I would hate to have that happen so I just feel that there would be greater longevity to the piece if I stitch it on Ada whether I frame it or turn it into a pillow or a flat fold or something like that and I mean for the most part you can find Ada that would match whatever um, okay so I had a couple of impulsive new starts so this one is called summer album the most beautiful things about summer and this is from a German cross stitch magazine I believe it's just called cross stitch motif so I use the Readly app and I have my settings set to international so I get craft magazines from all over the place so this magazine I think it comes out twice a year there's usually a spring summer and a fall winter Christmas um, so this is the one that came out in the spring Get a closer look there uh, it came out in the spring and I thought oh my gosh I want to start that that's so pretty and I did I started it right away and I started with this um, block here and then I was like oh I don't I don't think I like this so I finished this one I thought no I I still don't like this so I started this one and I thought well it's okay I should have started with these two but I pretty much decided after I made my first mistake on this block that I wasn't going to continue down here so I've completed these two and this is what they look like so the colors I mean the colors are okay it's just not something I mean I do admit it is pretty but it's not something that I could see myself um, displaying in my home not that I don't like butterflies and flowers because I do but I have a lot of other kits and charts of butterflies and flowers that I would prefer to put the work into because I really do want those on display so um, I mean I feel kind of bad because I did cut the fabric but at least that's a it's a decent size piece that I'm cutting off so you'll see this line in the middle that's just I pulled a thread out so that when I I'm gonna cut this um, so that I can cut a straight line and the plan is to I'm just gonna cut these apart and I'll probably turn them into lavender bags and yeah so I mean that was kind of unfortunate but I mean the whole time I was working on it I was thinking I really don't want to work on this I mean it's okay it's not difficult but I'm just not like enjoying it I probably I would hope to stitch these two down here I really like them in the preview I don't know if they will translate like that onto fabric because the the yellows called for are much lighter than what they show here um, so we'll see but if I do stitch these I'm just going to stitch them individually and then you know I might frame this one and turn that one into a lavender bag I don't know but I'm calling it a finish even though it's a half finish it, is, it was a give up basically but at least I finished the whole you know at least I finished the frames then I had another rather impulsive new start I was at my local needlework shop which I'm going to miss very much when I move and I don't know I was getting thread or something and then all of a sudden I just thought I really want to stitch this so I have summer Quakers I wish I purchased last year and I bought the floss for it um, yeah 
never mind coming home to start that one. I just had to buy this one. So I really liked the fabric on there, but they don't have it. So I rooted around in the fabric bins and I settled on, this is a 16 count Ada and I believe it's called French, French lace. So you're not going to really be able to see it there, but it has a very, it's a very pale, pale, dusty green. And my LNS does not carry the, the pearl cottons, the Valdani pearl cottons, but they do carry the Valdani embroidery floss, which are the same colors, the same names as what, as the pearl cotton. So I decided to do, I decided to purchase those. So these are the colors and they're very, I would call it, I don't know, like a prim spring or a muted spring. They're very pretty. It's just also, once I started working on this, I was like, oh, I don't know. It wasn't what I really needed at the time. So these are the colors I'm, I was using most of them, but there was one I subbed out. There's a really dark red in here. I think it's this one. So it's a really dark red and I didn't like, I don't know, it just doesn't seem spring-like to me. So I subbed out this purple instead. So there's a light purple and a dark purple and then there's a couple of dark reds and a couple of uh, light or darker pinks. Um, so anyway, these are the threads and this is where I have got to on this. So this was it's kind of been a TV project so that I didn't sew my ends or anything or my sides or anything. So it was when I did stitch this red that I thought I really don't like that. It doesn't seem springy to me. So I might pull those out. I'm not sure. Or or else I'll just try to make an effort to put little bits of that same red somewhere else. Um, no, I mean, it doesn't look so bad in the camera. But um, yeah, it was just another one that as soon as I started it, I thought, oh, why did I start this? But anyway, I'm committed now. I bought everything for it. So that was my other new start, and that's not all. So I had a birthday recently, and even though, like with all the bad luck that I've had starting other stuff, and I knew I shouldn't have started something else, I thought, no, I would like to have a birthday start. So when my husband and I were gone, and we spent a lot of time... Well, one of the times we were just like waiting for something to happen in the hotel room and I was looking online on, on Etsy and I found this spring sampler and happy pigs pin keep from Sub Rosa off of Etsy. And I thought that is so cute. So I purchased that while we were gone and I decided this is what I wanted to be for my birthday start. So I love, there's an aqua border around the whole thing so I love the aqua border and I love all the pink flowers and the pink berry basket and the little pigs right there. And I love this one with the pigs. I just thought it was a very happy and spring project. And these are mostly the called for threads. I couldn't find I think it's Weeks Aqua. I couldn't find that, so I found this Huckleberry um, from the Gentle Art, which I thought was super pretty. Um, these whites are different flosses. They'll probably be for the house. Um, but the one floss, so I've been using for all the flower border is called Hibiscus. And it is so gorgeous. It's just the most perfect variegated pink, I think. So. I happily went to town on this one. So I started started part of my border. Oh, I and then I even found this piece of fabric. So I measured everything and was like, okay, this is great. Uh, I didn't even have to cut this, it was already cut. I believe this is 32 count wheat. Um, so start, that's just one thread length. 
I loved how that turned out. I was working on the flowers and the leaves and absolutely loving this hibiscus. And then I knew I was gonna go back and buy some more. So I'm happily stitching away and then look what I did. Look at that. So obviously I started over too far. Um, and I only noticed when I got to about here, I thought, well, I'm not at the center yet, but I'm definitely more than, you know, over. So I just, like, I continued on anyway. I wanted to see how close that I would be. I'm very close. I could still get away with, I thought I could make it into a pillow, which means I would have the space here. I'd have enough for a seam allowance. But if I do that, I'm not going to have an aqua border. So I thought I could rip that out. I thought, well, I could maybe just stitch the flowers and it would be in a round and then I could stitch, like I could even turn it this way and then stitch something in there. Um, yeah, and if I pillow, okay, I won't do that. But you know what? Like I really want to stitch the whole picture. I want the aqua border. I want the house, I want the pigs, I want it to be in a frame, I really don't want a pillow, so I abandoned this. Um, and then I had to go definitely buy more hibiscus because I won't have enough to start again. So thankfully this is a quick stitch, I mean this is just a couple evenings of work, and I will think of something to do with this, I just don't know what. Um, yeah, so that was like kind of heartbreaking. Um, so yeah, that's give up. When I stitch this again, I'm not sure if I will use the wheat fabric. I mean, it's okay. It's kind of matches what was in the pattern. I think they used vintage country mocha, which I have somewhere. Um, so I might use that or when I went back to buy more, of the hibiscus, I decided to buy, so this is fiber on a whim and this is cream and sugar. So this is 28 count Lugana. So it'll end up being bigger and it's a very lovely, you probably can't tell. Anyway, it's a very lovely modeled cream. And I thought that with the exception of the white, that this, these floss colors, might look pretty on this. I don't know. But I'm not going to start right away because pretty much everything has just been a disaster so far. So I think I'll wait. I'll either wait until May or I'm just going to wait until after we move. Yeah, which is probably a better idea. So that has been, yeah, that's been my cross stitching um, <laughs> for the last two months. Like nothing terribly successful. Um, I, I mean, the bookmarks were great because it's nice to have, it's not a mindless project, but it's not, um, I don't know, anything I have to really concentrate on. And the Spring Quakers, I stitched that on Ada, but I do have to pay more attention because there's a lot of color changes because it's a Rosewood Manor. But yeah, that was it for the cross stitching. But I did want to show you something. So for my birthday, um, one of my friends, the lovely Deb, gifted me some pearl cotton. So if you're a yarny, you know the company Sheepies. So that's a yarn company. I think they're based out of the Netherlands. So anyway, Sheepies, they do all sorts of yarn, but they have recently started doing the pearl cotton. So you can buy, you can buy these individually, but they also have these color packs. So Deb thought, Debbie thought that this I'd be able to use this for cross-stitching, and I will. And look at those beautiful colors. So what I love about this is, I mean, this is perfect for an autumn project. Everything coordinates so beautifully. I mean, if I was picking colors for an autumn project, I never would have put these grays in there. It never would have occurred to me. So like this one and this one. Um, but they go so beautifully in here. So I am really looking forward to finding some charts this fall that I can use this for. So it isn't marked on here, but I did a comparison with 
my other pearl cottons and this is about like a size eight so that's about you know two two strands of floss together two and a half maybe so on a 14 count this is going to be beautiful coverage and probably on a 16 count it would work too I don't know if I'd do it on anything higher than that but I just thought that this was a nice um, a nice little thing and um, if you wanted to I mean most yarn oh, not most a lot of yarn shops will sell these so I just wanted to um, yeah let you know about it so they have a couple different kinds of color packs I think there's a blues and purples and greens and whatnot and then this one is called toffee all of these autumn colors so I'm actually thinking that I have a couple blackbird design charts in those books and um, thought these would be beautiful for that okay so that's it for the cross stitch um, 20 minutes I didn't think I would talk about it for that long um, quilting so I've been doing more sewing because it's all so easy and when the house was for sale um, like I had to like take my craft room apart and really just make it look nicer because it's very full in here and very busy so I had to take a lot of stuff down like I had I used to have a table in here that I would craft at and I could kind of spread out and a couple other storage things that I had to take out so I just have my desk in here or like a sewing desk in here and my machine so I couldn't do any sewing when the house was for sale because sewing makes such a mess so once the house sold um, I couldn't really bring the table back up there was no point because I had to disassemble the whole thing um, so I've really just been doing a lot of sewing so I really needed to get this quilt finished and I've showed you this a couple times before but now it's finished so this is the it's called the windmill quilt and it's a free pattern from material girl quilts um, I forget how big it is but it's big and I added a border to it so this quilt uses an entire layer cake and I had one I had purchased I think last summer I managed to get my hands on a Nantu Nantucket summer layer cake so that's what I used that's the, all the blues and greens and then the white was just stuff I had in my stash and then the border I added was I was able to get some there we go I was able to get some yardage of the Nantucket summer and that's what I used for the border so this is it's over 80 inches wide because this fits on our bed which is a king size bed, like a North American king size bed and I didn't want it to be a quilt that really hangs over the sides on a, on a queen size bed it will but for our bed like we already have a big quilt on the bed this pretty much lays over the top and then just the borders hang over the side but it's kind of perfect because it's the secondary blanket and so you know if like we're too hot we can just flip it off and it's not like a big you're not hauling it covers and um, yeah it doesn't really bother bother each of us if, to do that in the middle of the night so it's the perfect size and I mean I just love the colors they're so springy and I don't know they're just like fresh and pretty aren't they so I'm super pleased with that it's the biggest quilt I've ever made so quilting it was a bit of a challenge because I just used my own machine to do that um, I just did straight line quilting I think I did a quarter of an inch on each side of the seams but then I mean once once I washed it because I use the cotton batting now you know and it just it looks so quilty and lovely because it all kind of scrunches up so anyway love it this was like a success of the season um what else can I tell you about it it's is it's an easy quilt to make it's all half square triangles um it's just like a lot of work so it's a lot of cutting and and pressing and trimming that kind of thing I guess trimming up this the half square triangles is the the biggest amount of work um yeah I love it I I would totally recommend it I will try to link the pattern below it makes very large blocks 
and yeah it's just scrappy and nice and I love that it uses a whole layer cake because I don't like to I don't like waste and that used the whole thing and it's it's still pretty big without the border too so I only had a meter of meter or meter and a half of the border fabric um, and so I just like measured everything so that I could get as wide of a border as I could. And it's just backed with, I had a duvet cover. It's like a blue white toile duvet cover. I would show you, but as soon as I touch that thing, it's going to come like crashing down. So yeah, and there you go. One more time. So I love that. So then I thought I wanted to do something because it, it felt like that quilt took a really long time, even though it really didn't. Um, I found this book at the thrift store. It's by Brenda Henning. It's Impressionist Stained Glass and it's a series of four wall hangings. So I really like this one and I really like this one. So it calls to use batiks. I've never used batiks before. I've never purchased batiks because I had this idea in my head that batiks just had this certain, they always had the same kind of pattern on them that I didn't really care for. But when I went to the store and I looked at the batiks, I totally fell in love because they're really gorgeous. So I tried to get, I tried to replicate this as best I could. Um, anyway, so this is for the stained glass one. You don't actually use the like a bias tape for the leading. You're putting all of these colored pieces on top of a piece of black fabric and then you it's the black fabric that shows through. So when you cut out the pieces So if you're going to cut out the pieces, you'll cut it on the like inside of the line so when you put it down on the fabric um, you know the seams like the edges aren't butting up against each other you'll have that little bit of black underneath so it was something I've it was something different I've never done before um, it was a lot of fun I don't know if I'll make the other ones if I do I'd make this one and only because I would love to buy a whole bunch of blue batiks because they're so gorgeous so this is my Walling. I love it. That is so gorgeous. And like, look at those batiks. I did, I think, yeah, this isn't a batik. This is a quilting cotton, but it's hard to get like true red batiks. They're more like either orangey or pinky. Um, and I needed some here. And I think this might be a quilting cotton as well, because I only needed tiny pieces. But I mean, look at like, I love this guy. So super happy about that there is a bit of a pattern to the background I don't know if you can see it like on the like printed on the fabric but I love this so this took me oh pretty much a whole day like from start to finish and I quilted this one so I quilted every um, every section yeah I quilted every section between the leading and I used different colored floss. So I just used a cream for here and then I used red and just, you know, went around. That probably took the longest. And I just did like a stippled, you can see that, just did a stippled for the background and then a few accent lines there. You can't really see it on the back because I used a, like I used a, just a pattern thing. But if you use like a solid color back and then after you do the quilting, you can see the pattern on the back. It looks really cool. I mean, you can kind of see the outline of the poppies there. So there we go. Um, yeah, very, very happy with how this turned out. So I actually have this hanging up and uh, outside my craft room for the moment. And yeah, uh, what else can I tell you about this? That's it. Well, okay. Um, because I was doing all the quilting and with all the different colors, I've been having a lot of trouble with the threads. So I used to, like if I saw a thread at the thrift store, I would just buy it. And one day I was having so much trouble with my machine and the thread kept breaking. And then I realized it was just like a cheap thread. So 
when you're doing like all those different colors and constantly changing and with free motion, you definitely don't want your thread breaking all the time. So I was getting really fed up um, because what like I, I feel like I have a lot of sewing thread, but if I go through and I actually look at the quality sewing thread, I don't have that much. So for my birthday, I asked my husband if he could get me this thread set. So it's by Guterman and it comes in a tin. And let's see if I can do this without knocking everything out. So it's got all these lovely colors. I think there's 48 or 49. So then this way I can like easily switch colors. I won't be using these for full size quilts because it wouldn't it wouldn't be enough. But for these small projects for doing the top stitching, it'll be perfect. So very to have happy to have those. And then I um, also had him pick up some bobbins so I can do one bobbin for each color and then when I'm ready to go I'm like totally ready to go so that was a lovely gift and let's see I worked a little bit on I'll just put those there this is a quilt it's a cherry cherry pie blocks from the Lori Holt um, one of the farm vintage books. So I'm making a wall hanging out of this and I finally got these sewed together. I just have to sew the top to the bottom. So this is, it will be nine blocks. I have to cut all the borders and it's just a combination of either red and pink or, um, red and pink, <laughs> red and pink, um, or pink and pink or red and red. So it'll be a three by three and then um, a bunch of aqua uh, borders on it. So I never had room in this house to hang up a quilt in the kitchen, and I don't have room in my next house either, but I'm going to finish it, and I can at least hang it up in my craft room, which I am gonna have a craft room, another craft room I'm very grateful for, so I can hang that up there. Because I still love the colors, I just think that's just fun for summer. So you will see this some more as I build on it. But lastly, what I want to talk about, so what I've been working on the most this month is this quilt, Stained Glass Garden. Um, somebody gave me this quilt kit. So a woman in one of my sewing groups where I used to live was just de-stashing some things and um, this was one of the things she was de-stashing. So I thought, well, I don't know if I'll make the whole thing because that's pretty big and it looks pretty complicated. A couple of years ago, I decided to try, I made the daffodil block. I think it was about three years ago and I talked about it on my channel. Um, I enjoyed doing it, but I didn't think, well, then I was like, no, I'm definitely not gonna make the whole thing, but I'll do maybe this panel, this one, and then two others and make like a, a wall hanging or something. So um, that was kind of always in the back of my mind to do. And then a couple times over the past year, I thought, you know, I should just like g give this to somebody else who's going to make the whole thing because all the fabric's there or most of the fabric's there. Anyway, in the end, I decided I'm just going to pull this out and I'm just going to start making blocks. And that's what I did. So I have made almost all of them. And I'm going to show them to all of you because they're all different. So we have the wild roses. So now how I'm doing this, okay, in the pattern it calls for, you know, just like the fabrics that you cut out, um, something called like Roxanne's Baste It, which is a glue, you just baste the fabric down and then it's this clover quarter inch fusible bias. Um, and that's what you use. Okay, so I used, is it called Wonder Under? Um, heat and Bond, Heat and Bond Light. So this is stiff. So this couldn't be a bed quilt anyway, not that I would have put this on my bed. Um, this is going to be big. I can't even make the whole thing. I can't finish the whole thing. And I'll tell you why later, but um, it'll be a very kind of large-ish wall hanging because this is stiff. Um, anyway, okay, so here's the block. So we have this rose one, and all of these fabrics were in the quilt kit. 
here are morning glories. So I had to remake the daffodil block and I didn't have enough of this blue, but it's, it's really not going to matter as long as I have, you know, it across the top. Um, so we make the daffodil block. These are quilting cottons, but a lot of them just look like batiks. I had started off doing these corner blocks because I thought they would be easier, the non-flower ones. So we have this one and this one. And these are big, like they'll be 14, 14 inches when they're finished. Uh, this one, here is the iris block. I thought this one was really pretty. And another corner one. And here's a bird one. I changed the colors on this because I wanted a blue bird. And I I didn't do the bias tape here um, because I could never get his eye to look right. So after this is all quilted, I'm just gonna sew a little black button there. But I'm very happy with my blue bird. Uh, here's a rose block. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, there's a rose block. And then I have, so I have run out of the clover bias binding, so I'm, that's going to come today. So the last two blocks were butterflies, and I didn't like the ones that were in the pattern because, I don't know, I just thought they looked, I especially didn't like this one. This one was okay, but I didn't love them. So... I made a block, I used the same pattern of the poppies from the wall hanging, so this is what I've got for this one, and obviously I ran out of the bias binding, uh, so we've got that one to finish today, and then this one I, I decided to do a dragonfly, so it'll look much different when I have the bias on there as well, bias binding. And I got, I looked up like stained glass patterns. If you look about, look that up online, there are tons of patterns. Or if you were to look up, you know, coloring pages, uh, free printable coloring pages. I mean, you could make a whole quilt with just the free patterns from that. Um, yeah, so all the, all the fabrics were in the kit. And then for the large center, um, I just finished that, so I changed this fabric to just a cotton from my stash because I wanted it to look like um, a blue and white vase. So this one is, it's double the size. Here we go. So that's what that guy looks like. And so you can see I just used uh, one of my own fabrics, and I actually I really like that. Okay, so those are all of those are all of the blocks, like the square blocks. So I'm they're a lot of work. It's not hard, but it's a lot of work because you're tracing everything, and then you're um, onto the heat and bond, and then you're cutting out the heat and bond, infusing into the fabric, and or cutting that out and then putting everything together and then the bias or bias binding. So it's been a lot of work and then I'll, I, I would do a block and I think, okay, this is a lot of work. I'm going to put this away for a while. But then I would come out the next day and my sewing machine is set up. And once I put my sewing machine away, I, I won't sew for months. Um, so I like, I just kept going and it's been a nice kind of mindless thing. And like now I'm practically done the whole thing. I won't be able to finish the quilt as as this. Um, first of all, I don't have enough of the background fabric, which is what you use here. Now I could probably find some more that's close enough. Um, but the thing is, that bias binding, so I can get from 
How does this work? I can get almost two blocks out of one. Yeah, maybe almost two blocks out of one <clears throat> roll of bias binding. Now, I would suspect that at the time that this pattern came out, bias binding was probably a lot cheaper because I put a significant investment in this thing just because of the bias binding. So I had all the fabrics and there's lots left over. <clears throat> um, like I said, I, I'm missing this blue and I, I will have to... I will have to purchase some black, which is, you know, that's pretty inexpensive, but it's just this clover stuff and I have to get it on Amazon because the quilt store, they say they can't even get it anymore. Um, yeah, it's been a lot. So I've already, just for the binding, I've put as much money into this as all of my, like any of my other quilts that I have made. And that's just for the binding. So that's why I'm not, um, I'm not going to finish. So I did a photocopy of that. What I would like to do if I could is there's just this little skinny strip down here. Um, if I could just do that, so I have enough fabric. Now here, I could probably get away with using regular black bias binding, just the double fold stuff you buy, because it's just like the little angles you're putting on. I could probably get away with that. Um, the reason, I thought I could use it on the other parts of the quilt, but regular bias binding is four layers of fabric, and the clover bias binding is only two layers of fabric and it's just a lot thinner. Um, so, I just for that little border, I mean, I could probably get away with that. Now, I would love to do, I'd love to make it like this, to have these roses on top, but I'm not gonna have enough, and I, <laughs> I refuse to buy any more clover bias binding. Um, but either way, like, if it looks like this, or if it looks like this, or even if it's missing that very last little skinny border, I think it's gonna look fabulous. So it's going to be a wall hanging, and I just think that when it's all together and when it's quilted, um, yeah, I think it's just gonna be like, you'll walk in and see it and think, wow, because the colors are so bright and vibrant. Yeah, I think it'll be nice. Um, now, quilting, I have no idea how I'm gonna quilt this. I don't think it's something I could do here. I don't I I don't know, do any of you know like will the the bias binding that's on there now like if I take it to somebody with a long arm is like is that going to bump into the um the the foot? I don't know. Um I I guess I'll find out. So I have a friend who lives where I'm, you know, moving to and she just bought a long arm, so uh we'll probably try to figure that out together. Um, the other thing is, is it's, it's pretty stiff because like I said, I use the heat and bond, I use the heat and bond light, but it's still pretty stiff. So I don't know. I just don't know. I guess watch this space. But, um, even if I don't, well, I'm not going to finish, I'm not going to do all the borders, but I'm very happy with it. And I'm happy that I decided to stay with it and just complete the kit as best that I can. Um, I'm not going to put it together before I move, so I think I'm just going to lay it all flat, maybe in another quilt, and roll it up so that no creases get put into it because of all the heat and bond, like it actually would crease if it gets cold. And that's the plan for that, fingers crossed. Okay, I, uh, oh, I've talked a lot longer than I intended to. So... That's it. That's that's what I've been working on. And <clears throat> I haven't made any plans because like everything, all my stitching has kind of been a disaster. I'll just probably pick up some um, works in progress that I have sitting around and work on those. I'm not going to be doing any more quilts like this. And once I get the bias binding and I finish those last two blocks, 
um, then I got to take my machine in for servicing because I want to do that before I move and then I probably just won't sew because we're moving at the end of May and I mean already April is just zipped by um, so yeah the time will go very quickly because we've got a lot to do and yeah so um, I mean I hope to be back before I move and if not yeah let's just say I hope to be back before I move so thank you so much for dropping by today and uh, thank you for your comments and your likes and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it or a heart or like whatever it is <laughs> that you're supposed to do and um, I try to do these once a month it doesn't always work so if you do subscribe and you want to know just hit that little notification bell and then you'll find out when I'm doing it again so um, I hope you are all well and enjoying your spring and um, yeah, it's time to go. <laughs> all right. Happy days, friends.